Today's ICD-10 quick coding tip focuses on how to correctly code complications of cancer. My name is Claire and I'm an inpatient coding auditor. In my coding tips and tricks videos, you'll discover valuable insights to help sharpen your medical coding skills and code with confidence. If that sounds like something that would be helpful to you, please consider hitting that subscribe button so that you can be notified whenever I release new content. A cancer diagnosis puts individuals at risk for various complications associated with the malignancy. These complications can manifest in different ways, such as dehydration, a venal thromboembolism, and malignant obstructions in other body systems. One common challenge for coders is determining whether to sequence the malignancy itself or the complication first. However, there are guidelines and coding conventions available to assist in making this determination. According to the guideline for sequencing of neoplasm codes found in the official coding guidelines for Chapter 2 neoplasms, when a patient is admitted to the hospital to treat a complication related to a neoplasm and the treatment focuses solely on that complication, the complication should be sequenced as the principal diagnosis. The specific code for the malignancy should then be sequenced as a secondary diagnosis. Let's take a look at an example. In this scenario, a patient with known metastasis to the brain presents with altered mental status. After workup, it's determined that the altered mental status is a result of vasogenic cerebral edema and it's a complication of the metastatic cancer in the brain. To treat the vasogenic edema, the patient is started on steroids. In this case, because treatment was directed solely at the cerebral edema and nothing was done for the cancer, we should follow the Chapter 2 Neoplasm Sequencing Guideline and the principal diagnosis will be the cerebral edema with the secondary malignant neoplasm of the brain assigned as an additional diagnosis. One circumstance for which there is a specific guideline to follow is for encounters that are for management of dehydration caused by malignancy. The guideline tells us that in cases where the admission or encounter is solely for treating dehydration through IV fluids, the dehydration is sequenced first, followed by a code for the malignancy. For example, in this scenario, a patient with known pancreatic cancer presents to the ER severely dehydrated and is admitted for treatment with IV fluids. The final diagnosis is severe dehydration due to pancreatic cancer. In this case, the patient was admitted specifically to treat the dehydration, and that was all that was done. So following the guideline, the dehydration will be sequenced as a principal diagnosis with the malignancy assigned as an additional diagnosis. An exception for the encounter for complication associated with a neoplasm guideline is when an admission is specifically for the management of anemia associated with a malignancy. The guideline tells us that for situations where the treatment is solely for anemia, the appropriate code for the malignancy should be listed as the principal diagnosis, followed by code D630 for anemia and neoplastic disease. This guideline is also consistent with the instructional note found at code D630, telling us to code first the underlying neoplasm. Let's take a look at an example. In this scenario, a patient with known lung cancer presents to the ED with weakness and shortness of breath. Labs demonstrate severe anemia and the patient is admitted. The final diagnostic impression is symptomatic anemia due to lung cancer, improved with blood transfusion. In this case, even though the admission was specifically for treatment of the anemia and nothing was done for the malignancy, the malignancy will be sequenced as the principal diagnosis because the guideline and instructional note give us specific guidance to do so. The code for the anemia and neoplastic disease is sequenced as a secondary diagnosis. There are also some conditions that you will see commonly associated with malignancies that have their own sequencing rules due to specific instructional notes found in the tabular for those conditions. The instructional notes will be followed over the chapter specific guideline because the instructions and conventions of the classification take precedence over the guidelines. For example, malignant pleural effusion is a common complication of certain types of cancer. Malignant pleural effusion has an instructional note to code first underlying neoplasm. 
This instructional note indicates the proper sequencing order of the codes, etiology, meaning the cancer, followed by the manifestation, meaning the malignant pleural effusion. Let's take a look at an example. For this scenario, a patient with known breast cancer presents to the ED with shortness of breath. Imaging demonstrates a large pleural effusion and the patient is admitted. The final diagnosis is breast cancer with malignant pleural effusion improved with thoracentesis. In this case, even though the admission was specifically for treatment of the pleural effusion and nothing was done for the malignancy, the malignancy will be sequenced as the principal diagnosis because we must follow the instructional note telling us to code first the underlying neoplasm. The code for the malignant pleural effusion will be sequenced as a secondary code. So that's it for today's quick tip. I really hope that this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. And if there's any topics that you would like me to cover in the future, just leave a comment below and I'll add them to my list. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy coding.